Hey there once again YouTube. I'm not going to get into too much right now, but I did just want to say there was a little bit of slight swarming down near Borwell 208. Sorry if it sounds like my voice is very raspy. I woke up this morning, don't know why my voice is raspy, but I think I'm losing my voice. I think I'm getting sick with a head cold or something. But we're at Borwell 208 right now, February 19th. Actually, in the UTC, it is February 20th now. We did have a small swarm down here. Notice how there's no activity prior, but after this swarm appeared, there were a bunch of little tiny popping, which I will show right now. Okay, so here I am in the Seismic Program Swarm. I would like you to notice something just real quick. Again, I have the same data stream from Borehole 208 open in the Seismic Program Swarm version 2.8.7. I'm going to feature this video I'm doing right here <clears throat> on a section on my website. Uh, a new section just about this swarm real quick, but I want you to notice something. I have the spectrogram on a good amount of time period too. I'm going to say probably more than 10 minutes or so. Uh, but look down here below the 5 hertz line. You see that right here where you like to usually typically look out for low frequency activities, usually below this line right here. Just keep an eye on this. Watch as we go through. Notice I do not see much. Sorry, my computer's a little slow. There we go. Not seeing much. There was a microquake right there. Then as we go forward, keep going forward, keep going forward, we see a rapid fire swarm is starting to take place. Let me just show you this right here. And look at this. Multiple earthquakes happening in such rapid succession. And these are microquakes, by the way, guys. These aren't that crazy of a magnitude, but check it out. You can see uh, many events occurring in rapid succession, so close together that they look like pretty much one event, but you can pretty much tell those are separate microquakes. But let's just go back just for a second and go forward. You can see the largest event of the micro swarm was right there, but the energy was there though, a lot of energy. But notice what happens after the swarm. Look what appears below the 5 hertz line with dominant low frequencies. A bunch of tiny magnitudes. I'm talking about very low amplitudes, guys. Guys, are very weak. Very, very weak. But they are happening. Lots and lots and lots. And there's a microquake right there. But lots and lots and lots of low frequency popping after this swarm. Notice that? And then it dies down. It didn't die down completely, but usually this type of low frequency popping in the past I have associated to the uh, the ice layer above Yellowstone Lake popping and cracking. But the coincidence of this, it just is very odd. Here, let me just show you one last time up here. You barely could see any activity at all, right? Look at the 5 hertz line, below the 5 hertz line. Not much, not much to see here. One little microquake. Not much, not much, not much, not much, still not much. And then all of a sudden, we have an earthquake swarm. The magnitudes probably weren't that great, but as we go forward after the earthquake swarm, there's a bunch of low frequency popping. Look at that. And then a microquake, of course. But a bunch of little tiny low frequency popping, It just very odd. Very, very strange. And then it sort of dies down right after the swarm. But again... It started right after the swarm ended. Here's the swarm. No low frequency popping right before the swarm, right? Well, let's move forward. Notice how it starts right about here. I'm going to say probably about, what, 037, 038 UTC on, the, on February 20th for the UTC date, of course. So I don't know what the low frequency popping is from. I don't know. They're very tiny, though. Let's look at one of them just real fast. Let's look at one of these just real quick. Let's go to the waveforms. Look at these. They do sort of appear like some type of ice is popping. Look, about 300 amplitude count. But personally, I do not believe that is so in this case. Or possibly this swarm could have, I don't know, kicked up some heat. Maybe it's starting to melt the ice layer a little bit more on top of the lake. I'm not sure. I don't know, guys. I just thought the correlation of low frequency, low amplitude popping occurred right after the rapid fire swarm. But nothing is too major. This, the largest earthquake on the closest station, which is Borehole 208, is up to about 4,000 amplitude counts. So, but we will keep a closer eye on this. I'm still analyzing it, but I thought it was very strange that there is no low frequency popping at all, at all, prior to the swarm. And then the swarm happened right here. And then we started to see that low frequency popping, which did die down as of about an hour ago, but still could be going on. So I don't know what happened there. I will be back soon, guys, and I am working on some really cool stuff for you guys. So just stay tuned.